What was the strangest injury you or a teammate picked up uh, during your careers? I, I have, but it's quite actual. It's not really. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's mostly adults listed. I was good at rugby. Oh, I'll bet you. There's were. a surprise. I'm Yorkshire lad. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. Leeds Rhinos. Of course, I was. Welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards. Uh, today we're answering um, your questions and thanks once again for sending so many in. Uh, let's start with this one from Shane Douthwaite. Micah, to you. Start one, bench one, sell one. Shearer, Lineker, Kane. Oh! <laughs> and think about what you're doing oh, here. Come on, Micah. <laughs> Come on. No pressure. Wow. This is tough. This is... You know what? Kane's not part of the pod, so he's getting sold. <laughs> Very wise. Very wise. Now remember who's in charge of the pod. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Gary... I'm sorry you're on the bench this time. What? Yeah, right decision, Micah. He knows his stuff, that Micah Richards. I told you he was the best pundit ever. Right, which leads me, this leads me perfectly into the next question from Sarah Merker. Have you ever fallen out with someone or had a friendship suffer because of something you said as a pundit? Yes, I've just fallen out with Micah Richards uh, right now. Lineker, what? do you remember when you were a pundit and you accused me of feeling an injury when I was an England player. Did I? Yes. I can't believe I did that. I accused you of feigning injury. Why would I say that? I pulled out of an England game on a Wednesday. Oh, I then played yeah. for Newcastle or Blackburn, I think, on the Saturday. So and I was you right said then. on the Saturday night, well, he couldn't have been that injured if he played on the Saturday. So I sent you the scans through <laughs> to prove I was injured. <laughs> Feel free to apologise now, Lydia. Well, how many days after the game did you play? Three days. So it was a Wednesday night was the game. You're obviously faking it, weren't you? <laughs> big, who were you playing for Newcastle? Can't remember. Newcastle Can't remember. It must have been a big game then. Probably I just playing. remember you talking rubbish. You've never spoken rubbish, have you? <laughs> Ever. Uh, right. Um, here's one from Matt Court. If you three aren't presenting Match of the Day in 20 years, and oh, blimey, I just love to still be alive. Which three current Premier League players do you think you would like to see take your place? Wow. I think James Madison would be. Just I was going to say the same, same thing. thing. Well, yeah, because I think he talks really, really well, doesn't he? He's very eloquent yeah. and he's very good tactically. Um, I, I think he's the best of the players in the post-match mm, interview. I'd agree with that. You know what? A little bit left field, but... Connor Cody. That's not left field. I've seen him do a couple of things. He's good. In terms of people probably want strikers or not, but I'm going with the defender. Like, he knows the game really well, speaks really good. He, I've worked with him on Match of the Day, and he's done Sky as okay. well. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, let me have a think. Casper? Um, Casper Schmeichel. Yeah. As a goalkeeper. Very good. Like, yeah. his dad's done lots of punditry as well. Mm -hmm. We've worked with um, Peter many times, haven't we? That's not a bad shout. Yeah. Um, can you remember, Alan, um, when we did the World Cup in Moscow and there were three young footballers? Yes. And there was it was Mason Mount, Phil Foden and Ryan Sessegnon. Um, they came um, to watch us do the TV shows yeah. and stuff like that. And Mason Mount yeah. sat in my chair mm. and, and was like... He just reeled it off, didn't he? Doing, doing a few things to camera and he wasn't too bad. Yeah. So who knows, maybe Mason Mount. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Declan Rice, Declan Rice. We forgot Declan. Declan. Yes, very likable. Come on, Declan. Yes, yes he's going to be doing it. Definitely. Right, another question. Tupac. When a high-profile big money player on astronomical wages transfers to a club, is there any resentment, jealousy, sideways glances amongst the other players? How does it affect the dynamics and the camaraderie in the dressing room, or worse, on the field? I think the only thing it does sometimes, if a player comes in on um, huge wages, then it gives the opportunity to the rest of the team to knock on knock on the door and say, well, if he's getting that, surely I'm worth more. Micah, that never affected you. Euros on the most anyway out of everyone, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> no, to be honest, I went from highest paid to lowest paid within 18 months. <laughs> when, all, when all the money came round, uh, I generally did, but I knew... Once it was time to negotiate for a new contract, just had to give me <laughs> what everyone else was paying. But no, for me, no, 
if a striker gets paid loads of money and the mm. scoring, good luck to him. It's not something that I can't remember anyone really having those kind of discussions within the own your own squad. Sometimes it's interesting you go to international duty, and I think there's a little bit of that. Well, so what you want at Man United or what you want at Arsenal? You'd always say lower, though, wouldn't you? You'd always say lower. No, I say more. Did just you? sicken them. <laughs> we always used to have it with Martin Keown, didn't he? Because Martin was obsessed with money at times. Cause, so, so right, he used to say, "If you just stand here and talk to me," and right, he used to talk a bit louder just when Martin yeah. was walking past. <laughs> and he said, "You know what? I mean, he's on seventy grand a week, and you can see Martin turn around and go." <laughs> right, he's just winding him up. Did you not get pay slips back in them days, or how how did it work? Yeah, pay slips. You got pay slip. I'm 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 gonna bring in a pay slip so you can, so people can see exactly how it's broken down. You know, with the have t- you got one? Have you? I've got one for next one when we're going all yeah. together. I'll bring one. Yeah, that would be good to see. Oh, it'd be sickening to a lot of people. <laughs> <have to. laughs> right. Um, question from Matt. Cox, who do you think is the best manager, uh, young and up and coming, outside of the Premier League that you could see making the move to a Premier club? I'm going to go with Kieran McKenna from Ipswich Town. I think he's he's done a brilliant job with them. Um, he's young. He was I think he was at um, youth coach at Manchester United. He was at um, Tottenham bit before that. I would agree with you there, by the way. He's, um, he's doing a great job, isn't he? He's yeah. got something, hasn't he? They're flying at the top of the league. Doing a really good job, yeah. Got any any thoughts, you two? Liam Rossinia? I mean, every time I hear him speak, he speaks mm. so well. Uh, he's definitely yeah. got something with his ideas. Um, I think he, given time, could do a really good job at a higher level. So I'm going Rossini. I think if you'd have said a few months ago, you might have said Michael Carrick, but it's, it's I've had a tough start to the season. Isn't that just crazy how that how football works like that? There's no doubt about it. You could have said uh, you could have said Michael months ago, but then all of a sudden this season, forward goes, can't score goals, um, and then. Results are going against you, so it's, it, it is crazy. Football is just bonkers, isn't it? We've got a question from Campbell Goring. Would Liverpool be stupid not to sell Salah in January for 150 million plus if the Saudi league came knocking again? He's been an incredible player for the club in recent years, but money like this for someone of his age does not come around too often. It seems like a cash-in while you can option. Ooh, I said that's an, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And I'm sure they contemplated that in the summer. Does that depend where they are and how they're, they're going in terms of Champions League? Fans league? don't care about the money though, do they? You know, they want their best possible team. And Mo Salah is an unbelievably brilliant footballer. If you're getting north of 150 million for someone of that age, then... I get I get why it didn't happen because it it, it um, they came in so late and they wouldn't have had time to get a replacement. But if they know they're coming back in in January with a ridiculous offer, then they've got time to find a replacement. And and again, it depends where they are. Don't sell. Nope. Don't sell. No. I agree with 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 Alan. from a financial point of view, but just what is given the club. And Salah will probably play for another seven mm. or eight years. I think he's got a couple more years at Liverpool and still would be able to demand a hundred, hundred plus in even two seasons. So I would say, hold tight. He goes to Liverpool and says, I want to go because of the vast sums that have been offered to him personally. He will dictate that. If he goes to them and said, then then that will that will make their mind up. It's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because... Fans, sometimes when you, you lose one of your best players, but they do sell him for a big price, you kind of, as a fan, you go, well, at least we've got a few quid, we can buy some new <laughs> players and stuff. But but no. players like that are irreplaceable. No, no. Yeah, I, I think we, we look back to Coutinho and they got a lot of money for him and they bought Van Dijk and they bought Alisson with that money and it worked for him. But I just think Salah doesn't even have to play well and he still scores. So I just think mm. if you want to build a world-class team, you've got to have Salah in that team Agreed. right now. Marcus Wikes, 
Gary, I've heard on various other podcasts that you were quite the cricketer and could have made it as a pro. I was wondering if Alan and Micah were good at any other sports. Well, we know Alan's good at tennis because he got to the quarterfinals of a major <laughs> tournament just a couple of weeks ago. I was good at rugby. Oh, I'll bet you There's were. There's a surprise. I'm Yorkshire lad. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. Leeds Rhinos, of course it was. Quick. Imagine standing there, running, and Mike is coming at you, Gary. Rugby league, then. He's ready to hit you. Rugby league or rugby Rug- union? Rugby league, yeah. I used to love it. I had to pick out of going to rugby and going to football, but I picked football and, yeah. Bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about you, Al? Oh, I would have, uh, not that I'm good enough, but I just love golf, don't I? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not as good as I want to be, but I just love how crazy it is, golf. I think it's, it's so frustrating at times, but so great, so... Golf for me, yeah. Uh, from Johnny Thompson, uh, what was the strangest injury you or a teammate picked up uh, during your careers? Uh, one of the lads in our team recently stubbed his toe in his kitchen. Turns out it's fractured and he's now out for around six weeks. I, I have, but it's quite sexual. It's not really for this <laughs> <laughs> It's not really for this pod. It's okay. It's, it's mostly adults this year. <laughs> What do you mean? No, you can't leave it at it's that. Come on, Micah. So, it's so, what? so basically. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I can see it's gone viral. It's gone viral it's already. Not, it's not. It's not. But obviously, you got a virus. You, 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 <laughs> oh dear. We can't, this is the thing: is you can't go into detail. But basically, I was having. Yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah, I, I was having. <laughs> Something fun. Like, yeah, I was in fun. Let, let's let's put it like that. Yeah. And as I was having fun, I slipped off the bed. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I stretched my leg and did my hamstring. So I rolled over. But the thing is, though, I was I was totally fine in training. So when I go back to training, and the. <laughs> Physio have asked me, what what have you done and whatnot? And I just said, no, I've just got some pain down my back. I felt it in the game, but I didn't really want to say nothing. But it was yeah. all just because of that that moment. But it was, yeah, it, they don't know the truth until till now, to be honest. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Alan, Alan, you can't live with that. I can't, can't, I can't keep up with that. We had a night out once with the lads. Um, and I don't know whether you have ever played it before, the box game where you got to st- stand straight up and every time someone goes down and gets the box with their mouth, you take about an inch or two off. Anyway, one of our players got further and further down and eventually his hamstring pinged. But he thought, how can we? How can he do it? Do that on a night out? So he actually came into training the next morning, and went out and did the warm up and pretended he's done his hamstring and the warm up and limped off. Not, <laughs> and we did it on the night before in the pub. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Um, when I was at Tottenham, I I used to live in St John's Wood, and um, I'd play um, I'd play cricket for this team called Cross Arrows, um, and they play basically ev- almost every day in September. So I went along and played played in this game and it was kind of meandering towards a draw um, towards the end of it. And someone said, Gary, why didn't you have a bowl? Now, I wasn't a bowler. I was a batsman. I'd, I'd also keep wicket, but I didn't keep wicket at that time of year because I was playing football. I ran in and back the second or third ball that I bowled. I used to bowl little medium paces. And I and I went like that, and you, as you lift your arm, and I twanged the muscle in the side of my, like just above my hip, and it was like, oh my god! And so I got home, I had to go into training the next morning, Friday, the day before a game on the Saturday. I went to see Terry Venables. I said, I've I've, I've injured my side. He went, how how do you do that? And I and I thought, I can't lie. <laughs> oh, Philbert, I was growling in the background at the thought of it, and. I said, well, I, I was playing cricket. He said, what do you mean you were playing cricket? I said, well, I was came in and I was bowling. And I twang- he went, you're playing cricket on a... He said, that's it. You're not playing cricket anymore. That's it. You're not playing again. Not all-. I went, oh, God. I said, Terry, you can't stop me playing cricket. He went, he went, you're not playing anymore. That's ridiculous what you've done. I went, all right. I said, I promise I'll never bowl again. And he went... 
all right then <laughs> <laughs> so I actually played on the Saturday um, and but I played in agony I thought but I had to play yeah. Our final question this week is from Stephen Carey. Uh, what was the most of... Oh, oh, oh yes, he's Wilbur. howling. He's, he's half husky. That's he's what howling. I was like when I fell off the bed when I did my upstream. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Too much information there, Micah. A question from Stephen Carey. What was the most violent or rancorous game that you ever played in? I remember watching a Manchester derby in the mid-70s where the referee had to take both teams off before half-time because they were kicking lumps out of each other. Ever remember one particular match? I, I remember watching a game. Do you, have you ever seen the replay? I think, was it 1970, 71, something like that, of um, the Chelsea-Leeds oh, FA yeah. Cup final? Wow. I think David Webb scored the winner where every player probably would have been sent off in the modern game. Have you ever seen that? If if you've not seen that, uh, um, uh, listeners, it's worth um, looking it up on YouTube. Yeah. Probably the dirtiest game of football ever played. Have you seen some of Sunes's tackles? <laughs> Alan, when I was about 20, 21, even younger, we, um, about 19, I'd just broken into the Leicester team and um, we played at Anfield. And um, someone knocked the ball into me and my touch wasn't brilliant and it went back towards midfield I was had my back to goal and Sunes was coming but I knew that I was going to get the ball um, and I thought I'm just going to get there ahead of him and I was some naive young kid and I just went like that put my foot out he went straight over the top <laughs> right down my shin I had about six stitches and I was I was like carried off and I and I learned a lesson that day the modern day game it changed and by the time we was playing, we get looked after by the referees and you might have a little bit of tussling in the in in, in the tunnel, but apart from that, there's no game where I come away from thinking, Wow, that was no, there was none of that in, in Alan, game. you liked it. You were like toughy. What about the Leicester game with Neil Lennon when you kicked his head? No, no, he he, he head <laughs> my foot. I came away from Highbury once with Tony Adams, uh six stitches in my eye. Seven stitches in my uh, in my lip. I walked yeah. into uh, I walked into two of his uh, two of his elbows. Um, <laughs> I, I came off worse than he did anyway that day. Let's call it a day there. Um, Micah needs to go and, um, and practice his hamstring <laughs> injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Uh, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Uh, goodbye from me. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>